Hello and good morning. Praise Jesus wherever you are. We are happy and grateful to be bringing you this service live. Once again, church at home, but you are welcome. We are so happy that you are with us and we are so glad that you could join us this morning. If you're just tuning in, this is Trinity Chapel Ruiru and this is our Sunday service. It's a very wonderful morning. The sun is out, shining bright. But we are just gathered here as people of God to get to worship, to get to love on God, to get to praise, pray, and to participate in this service. Now, if you're just tuning in, you want to share the link with your friends, but you also want to comment, you want to share, uh, you want to say hello, tell us where you're watching us from, and tell us that this is a blessing to you. We are so blessed to be um, your host, uh, just to interact with you right from the comfort of your home, or your car, or wherever you are, but we are happy that you are safe and the Lord has kept you. Welcome once again. I am Madanga and I am your host. It's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful moment. I just want to invite us to bow our heads even as we pray. Uh, if you're typing, you can put that on hold and then we can pray together. After that, I will invite the worship team. We're going to have an awesome time of worship and praise. And then later on, we'll also share in the word of God. So keep your comments coming. Keep watching. Keep yourself uh, glued on and we are happy we'll take you through and we will enjoy interacting commenting and replying to you just watching with you together god bless you so let's bow our heads and let's pray father lord in the name of jesus we are grateful that this morning you have gathered us as your people from wherever we are many of us at home some of us in offices and in the places of comfort lord we pray now this morning, even as we gather to worship and to love on your name, my father, my prayer this morning is that we, we will get to connect with the heart of the father. Lord, thank you for the privilege of being found in this place. Thank you for the privilege of being in the service. Thank you for the gift of life. And thank you for the amazing gifts and talents, oh God, that you bless us with. Thank you for this nation, oh my Father. And we are grateful, Lord, that at such a time as this, we are found. But Lord, thank you for the faithfulness that is in your word. Thank you for your word and for the many things that you are yet to do in our lives. Thank you for the miracle of gathering in such a manner, in such a way. Thank you for the gift of technology, oh God. And so, Lord, even as we praise and pray to you, how we pray, my Father, that you, you will help us connect with you, that your word will come so true to us, and that we will find every reason, and we will find every place, we will find it uh, worthy, oh God, um, to be in your presence. My Father, may you guide and bless each of us. May your word embrace and cover us, oh God. May you light our, our paths, oh God, this morning. But Lord God, how I pray, my Father, that indeed you will bless each and every heart, that you will bless each and every mind. And Lord, we will be blessed by your word, not only in this time, but even as we read and interact with it by ourselves. Lord, blessed be your name. Thank you, because we have hope. And hope that does not disappoint. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Karibu sana once more. Thank you so much. Tell us where you're watching from. Interact with us. Have a good time together. As we go into worship, you want to lay down. You want to lift up your hands. You want to kneel down. Whatever you can do, just worship. Just love on God. And just be happy. Together. In God's presence. Karibu sana, our worship team. Watch with us. Praise with us. Oh 
of life There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Say into the darkness you shine. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. No one like you. Awesome and power of God. Our God. Our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand us? If our God is for us, if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand us? Oh, if our God is for us, and if our God is for us. Then who could ever stop us? And if the God is with us, then what can stand if a God is for us? And if the God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if the God is with us, then what can stand again? Oh, 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 God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. There is no God like Jehovah. 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 There is no God. Help me say There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. Oh oh oh. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. One more time. There's no God like There's no God like There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. 
based on God like Jehovah. Oh, and how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, sing how great, how great is our God.
grateful. Father, we love your name. And we know that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. We know, oh God, that in our weakness, oh God, you are strong. The Lord, even when times are failing, my Father, you still rise us up. That when we are about to sink, Lord, you reach out your hands unto us and hold us. The Lord, you keep on strengthening us from one glory to another. And my Father, we are happy that we know that you're still on the throne. Lord, we are happy because we know that you're still in majesty. Lord, we are happy because we know that we can still trust on your name. That the, Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the rushes can still run to and they are safe. My Father, we are happy because we know that you always hear us and our, your ears are inclined to the cry of your children. My Father, we are happy because we know that your promises are still yes and amen. And Lord, we are happy because you, we know that you are our provider, that you are our never-changing God, that in every season, Lord, you remain the same. That, Lord, in every storm, my Father, you are the one that can come in. And, Lord, in every day, we can trust and lean on you. And, Father, you have invited us each and every day, no matter the circumstance, to draw near to your throne. That every single day, my Father, you still assure us that we are still heirs of the throne of God. And, the Lord, you have still called us by name. That you're still reminding us that our names are written on the palms of your hands. Lord, every day you still remind us of your goodness and of your love. The Lord, in the midst of the storm, we can rely on a name that can calm the storm. The Lord, even when we cannot see, we know that you're working. The Lord, you still remain Jehovah Jireh and you remain Jehovah Rapha. And that, Lord, you still Ebenezer who will look back unto this day and say, if the Lord had not been with us. And, Lord, we know this, Father, we have come. You are still Jehovah. You remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, Lord, we can lean on your name. We can see you. And, Lord, we can behold your beauty in the midst of the storm. We can see you in every word and in every way. We can walk with you in every light, oh my Father. And my God, we know that indeed at the end of this, you have a miracle prepared for us. And the Lord, we can walk in the promises each and every day. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Jesus. I invite you wherever you are at home. You can still trust God with whatever you have in your heart. You can still pray to God. You can still mention it to God. Because you know what? God is waiting for you to speak it. That he can do it. Our Lord is prepared. He is ready. He has been waiting for us to speak it. Because he can answer 
we know and we are convinced that our God is on the throne and nothing can take away his goodness from us. Nothing can change the fact that God loves you. Nothing can change the fact that God loves me and you. If you're trusting God for healing, if you're trusting God for provision, if you're trusting God for a new job, if you're trusting God for family, whatever it is that you're trusting God for, you can mention it. You can still talk to God. Because we know that it is not by our might nor by our power, but it is by the Spirit of God. So if you can trust God, if you can take it to the Lord in prayer, then we know that our God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, we can think of or imagine. He is ready. He is listening. And He is waiting for one man to speak it because He will do it for us surely. And church, you can turn with me uh, to your Bibles in the book of Psalms, chapter number 23. This has been my, my, my Bible verse throughout this week. I have been meditating and listening to God speak to me through his word. I'm just going to read it um, very fast even as we, as we pick out a few things that we can trust God unto. It says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. The Lord being a shepherd, the shepherd is concerned about the flock. The flock may be hungry, but the shepherd has more concern about the condition of the flock than the flock itself. He makes me lie down in fresh pasture. Remember, it is the shepherd, it is the work of the shepherd to look for the pasture for the flock. The flock only follows the shepherd. He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me into the paths of righteousness. Remember that the shepherd is concerned about the flock. He is in charge and he knows what is good for the flock. Yes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Now, one of the things that I like about the shepherd is that he never leaves the flock, no matter the circumstances. And if this was a danger, if the valley of the shadow of death was a danger for the flock, it was sure a danger for the shepherd. But guess what? The shepherd was right there. And verse number six, surely Goodness and mercy and failing love shall follow me all the days of my life. Remember, it is not just one day. It is not certain days. It is all the days. And perhaps you have something you're trusting God for. You've been uh, uh, praying to God about. You've been trusting God to do for you. Let me assure you that the shepherd is right there with the flock. He doesn't leave no matter the danger the flock faces. The shepherd is right there. And then there's an assurance in verse number 6 that surely goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house house of my father forever and ever are you trusting God for something in these times are you praying to God about something do you want God to fulfill something for you I'm here to tell you that there's someone we can rely on to lead us there's someone we can follow there's someone who has gone ahead of us there's a path we can walk in and that's the path of our shepherd there's a way we can go. And the shepherd has already provided the way. And I just want us to lay it all down to the shepherd and tell him, Lord, I am ready to follow your ways. I am ready to follow the path. I am ready to walk in the path, the path that you lead me into. I am ready to be guided by the shepherd. Because when the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not lack. Because the shepherd cares for the flock. And you can trust God for that. You can trust God together with me. And Lord, thank you because you are the shepherd we can trust on. You are the shepherd who leads and we follow. You are the one that guides our path. And Lord, thank you for the assurance throughout the text that you are right there, even in the valley of the shadow of death. And the Lord, we shall not lack because you are the shepherd. Even in these times, oh God, we know you shall provide for us. You shall keep on giving and giving unto us, oh God. 
you shall hold us oh god you shall walk with us your rod and staff will comfort us oh god and lord we can be rest assured that the joy of the lord will always be our strength weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and surely goodness and mercy shall follow each one of us for the rest of the days of our lives and we have an assurance that we shall dwell in the house of the father forever and ever lord how we love your promises and how we love and adore your name thank you for the many needs that you're meeting thank you for the many needs that you're fulfilling thank you for the restoration that you're providing thank you because even this time you're healing restoring saving and reassuring your people so blessed be your name in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus do we pray and give thanks and all god's people can type amen and amen and amen thank you so much thank you so much what an amazing time we have had in worship and just to read a few of your comments uh many of us are watching tuned in nyambura from washington and gidai watching from home thank you so much samimbao is watching us all the way from nyere ngina muteti is in ruiru kimbo we are glad you could join us Emma Washera thank you from Kiambu Road we are happy BP Mwangi watching from Kihunguro uh, Ruiru we are happy that you could join us Makena karibu sana everyone everyone watching we are so happy that you're right there with us we see people watching from Don Home uh, I'm really trying my best if I've not mentioned your name uh, I am finding it right away uh, Emily Doreen and uh, we, we are happy everyone thank you guys from sunrise up to karibu karibuni sana we greet all of you shiko uh, oh shiko is watching us from from the hague um uh, uh, morin kariga karibu sana wini jagongo ani kilonzo anthony karanja uh, lawrence we are happy that all of you could join us irene and jerry th- that's from my e group uh thank you so so much uh, keep on interacting with us we are available throughout the week oh isaac isaac and his family are watching from kahawa thank you so much oh you can just whatsapp me right there i will see and 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 say hello to you thank you so much for continuing uh support and interaction throughout the week I uh, just to assure you that we're still available throughout to to pray with you. Um, I keep on receiving texts and uh, of encouragement. We also need it. Thank you so much for for all that you're doing. We are glad that you're able to keep this conversation going. Invite as many as possible. Keep watching, keep tabs on our social media. We will keep you posted and we will keep praying and praising with you. Um oh uh Ivonne Wamushi thank you so much I appreciate it uh thank you so much for the love and uh, now um you can keep on um supporting the church and supporting the work of God through our tithes and offering we are uh available on Mpesa <laughs> I almost said we are available on WhatsApp. No, we are available on Mpesa and the pay bill number is 761780. On the account name just indicate what you're giving for, you're giving to tithe, you're giving offering 7617801 one more time on the account name just indicate whatever you're giving for. If you're giving for tithe, if you're giving for offering, uh, just indicate that you're giving towards to Navuka. Whatever you're giving towards just indicate that on the mpesa if you're doing a bank transfer we we are happy you can do that uh, our account details are ncba bank account number is 1004873986 um you can you can do that even as we get to pray for the offering and by the way just to let you know please do something during this quarantine period uh don't just waste it um find an activity find a hobby find something to do 
And as it is going, I hear that parents are trying to find a cure uh, before the silent is good so that children could go back to school. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough being at home. I have homeschooled a few of my <laughs> neighbors, uh, neighbor's kids. It's been very, very tough. All they want is the Wi-Fi password and no books. So uh, do something during this period. Connect with someone. Reply to old DMs. Uh, write emails. Do that proposal you've been waiting for. Do that cover page. Write that book. Just do something constructive. Because you know what? God is going to bless the work of your hands. If, you're gonna, if you've been trusting God for something, don't give it up. Don't lose hope now. If you've been trusting God to get married like some of us, um, the year is still young. Things will fall in place. So you are encouraged to keep doing that which you're supposed to do. Let's pray for the offering, even as I invite uh, Reverend Steve Duo to come and bring us the word. Lord, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to give unto you. Lord, even as we give unto you, we pray that you bless our work, you bless our businesses, you bless the places um, that we work from, and even the business that we uh, do during this time. Lord, we know it is tough, but we trust in your provision. We still know that you're on the throne. Thank you, my Father, for the gift that we are giving unto you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, it's time for the word. Uh, keep, uh, oh, someone is just right here next to the church. Karibu sana. Uh, oh, my plug-in family. Uh, Karibu ni sana. We are watching you. Eloto uh, Kakuta. That was my roommate in campus. Uh, Karibu ni sana. We, we are glad you're here. Martin Jagua. All the way from Kikuyu. Karibu sana. It's time for the word. Keep your comments coming. I will read them later on. Uh, keep the interaction going on. We are glad you're here. It's time for the word. And uh, to bring us the word is none other than our lead pastor, Reverend Steve Zuo. Uh, you can clap. You can put those two emojis of clapping on the, on the, on the comments. Karibuni sana sana. Fasi, should I pray for you? Yeah, you can. Uh, indeed. Uh, Lord... Thank you for the word and thank you for Reverend Steve Thuo because he is your servant. And Lord, we are your children, so let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Madanga. Madanga, it's a delight to be coming to you and to get to share God's word with you today. I am glad to say that it is morning. I, the way we, we were going, I was thinking that we might just start this in the afternoon. But may I start by um, maybe pointing one or two things. Let me start by thanking those who are in the front line of dealing with this whole thing in regard to COVID-19 and uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic that is with us. I really want to thank God for the doctors and the, and the nurses and the medical officers and the people who work in our hospitals in health units, um, the people who are responsible for making sure that uh, we are being kept healthy. Thank you so much for your work. We keep praying for you and praying for God's protection and God's guidance over your lives. We keep asking that the Lord of Israel, the God who watches even over Kenya and over the world, will watch over you and will guard and protect you even in the name of Jesus. We also know that there are some people who serve in essential services um, and who are interacting with people even uh, when people are out there and quarantined and, uh, and, and trying to keep it safe. We ask that... Um, that we keep praying for you and we keep trusting God to heal you and to watch over you even during such seasons. By the way, this includes uh, our beloved Matatu drivers and uh, conductors who have to work uh, during such seasons, people who are going for constructions, people who are selling us vegetables. May God watch over you. We continue praying for you and we do love you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this wonderful morning. I, I want to recap from where we were last week uh, from the book of Judges. I'm, I'm going to straddle uh, between the book of Judges, chapter 6 and chapter 7. Uh, from where I started from last week, Israel was living in such hard times against the Midianites who had invaded the land. And they felt that God had abandoned them. Uh, though they were living in their own sinful ways, they still asked, where was God 
uh, during such times. And we, we talked about three things last week. We talked about God's assurance to them that I am with you. I am with you at all times. Uh, God's address to this man that we find in Judges chapter 6, who is called Gideon, where God calls Gideon mighty warrior. And we agreed that God will call you not what you are at the moment, but what you're going to become. And so if, if you're in a moment where maybe you are, you know, you are concerned about how things are, uh, remember the promise of God and, and walk in the courage and in the boldness that God gives you. He still calls you mighty warrior. But we also talked about God's ask, which is the task that God has for us ahead, where God asks Gideon, uh, am I not sending you? Am I not giving you something even during such times? And, and my, my prayer is that while understanding this and living in the times that we are in, that will not be so in the box that we'll forget that God still has a mission and a task and a responsibility and the work that he has ahead of us for us to get to do, even as people who are called by his name. Now, there is a key question that comes in when you're dealing with these times and when you're dealing with such things, God's assurance, God's address, God's ask. And the question is this, if, if, if God has that kind of ask for me, if God has that kind of call that he's calling me, if God has that assurance that he's assuring me, does he understand the times and the seasons in which I am living? Does this seem, I, I don't know whether you've ever met somebody who is talking out of turn. Uh, they don't seem to understand the situation and the moments in which you're dealing with. And, and I, I, I really sense that sometimes you might have that kind of question. Does God understand my times and my situations really? And hence the sharing for today. And hence the title that I've given today's sharing. Against great odds. Against great odds. And I want to share with us four things that I think are very important for us uh, to remember so that we are able to overcome the great odds that might be against us. The first one is the word. And this is the word of God, the word that God has spoken to you, the word that he has deposited in your heart, the word that you have been learning and storing within you that God has given you. And this is the word that God had given Gideon during this season. And God told Gideon, I am with you. Can you believe it? This is God's one line answer to wherever he sends us or leads us to. I am with you. Uh, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God says, I am with you. Remember that word. It is very important and very key for us to remember because we will walk into circumstances and we'll walk into seasons, even beyond this season that we are in. Uh, we'll walk into those and we will wonder, is God still with us? Now, this is different from when, you know, politicians say something like, to Kopamoja, you know, or, uh, or uh, when somebody, you know, on a phone call tells you, ah, to Kopamoja, uh, it's, it's different. When God says, I am with you, it is an assurance. It's something that you can bank on, and you have to allow this truth to sink in. In another teaching, I was teaching about meditating, and meditating is when you chew on something again and again until it becomes part of you. Have you ever taken something in your mouth and you chewed on it, chewed on it until when people are passing by you, you smelt the same thing that you are eating? That is what meditation is about. Meditate on this. Allow this truth to sink in. When God says that I, I am with you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you're in that valley of the shadow of death, God assures us in his word. So remember that, the word that God gave Gideon, telling him, I am with you, Gideon, to guide you and to lead you, even in wherever you're going. Let, let, let me tell you something that happened to me when we went to high school. Um, they started showing us these movies, and uh, on Saturday night, the, sometimes we'll watch two movies, and the first movie will be general viewing. You know, they even allowed from ones and, you know, from twos to view that general viewing movie. But then, the second movie, which will come at around 9 p.m., 10 p.m., most of the times will be a horror movie. And man, in my life, up to when I went to secondary school, I'd never watched a horror movie. And man, you see the scenarios, you see this eerie feeling, like this house somewhere in a forest by itself, 
the road leading to it is iffy, iffy. Like this, the, the situation, you, you can hear the sound of the wind in the forest. And then maybe there is a creature or a, or a, you know, a dead body that has been resurrected that, that comes out. And you, 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 from where you're watching from, you want to warn the guy who is in that house or who's walking around, along that road that, that you know, something is coming to him or to her or they are about to meet their death. That, that's, that's the essence of, of a horror movie, to create fear, to create worry, to, to make you feel like you know, something is about to happen. And man, they would show us those horror movies, and when you go to sleep, <laughs> you, you realize you can't sleep. You are in that moment of wondering, Hiya, how am I going to sleep? What if the thing that came in that movie comes to me at night? Until, I think it was in Form 2 or Form 3 that I realized every horror movie has credits. At the end of it, it shows producer, cameraman, videographer, makeup artists, artists, uh, the, the people who are involved in acting. And I started realizing that though those guys were walking in that forest, though there was that house in that forest, and though there were things that were happening, the producer was always there. The makeup artist was always there. The cameraman was always there. The musician guy, the guy, you know, making sure that the music is coming, even the guy doing the thing was always there. God tells us, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, wait for the credits, you will realize I was always there with you. God is always with you. Hang on to that word. I am with you. That's a promise. So meditate on it until it becomes part of you. You know, somebody sent me a joke the other day telling me that what ladies do not realize is that when men escort them in the dark, when they are going back, they take their slippers and hold them in their hands <laughs> and run back. You know, because when they were going that way, he was with you. You were confident about where you are headed. But when he's going back, he's not assured of his security. But I'm telling you right now that God is with you through dark through the light, and he will guide you and lead you. So that's lesson number one, the word. Meditate on it until it becomes part of you. But there is a second thing here, and it is about the worry, the worry. Hang with me. I'm going to explain it in a moment. God called Gideon, but it did not mean that all of Gideon's worry was gone. Not all of it was gone. You see, you have to understand that even while you stand on God's word, God will take you through seasons where your own human fears are going to need to be worked out and worked off, each of them step by step. Otherwise, you will be crippled by the fear and you will fail to fulfill your task and the mission that God has for you. L let me give you a few things that Gideon had to deal with. Number one, is Gideon had to face the idolatry of his family. You see, the man that God was calling was a man who was living in an environment where people were worshipping the Baal and the Ashtoreths that everyone had in their home. And even Gideon's father had such in his own house. And Gideon, though God had called him, had to go and destroy the altar of Baal right in their home. He had to go and deal with their own sin and their own system of sin and of idolatry. And could it be that this season that God has brought us in with this coronavirus and COVID-19, that God is calling us to look inside and to confront our sins and altars of idolatry that we have built, some of them being our own self-dependence, some of them being systems that we have built of survival that are away from God and we depend on them. Some of them could be sinful habits and tendencies, but we never look in. We are always looking out and asking God, God, would you come and visit us? Would you come and change us? Would you come and do something miraculous? And God is looking at us and telling us, guys, you have to be worried about the fact that you are living in a sinful people and you have to get rid of every idol. And Gideon had to do this. In fact, he destroyed this altar and built an altar to the Lord that was called the Lord is peace. Because I can guarantee you 
that away from God, you will never find true peace. Even with curfew, you will never find true peace away from God. He dealt with that. The second thing that Gideon dealt with was a fleece. And uh, I'm going to be teaching about that later on. But Gideon put out a fleece and, and it, he was testing God and asking God, if you really sent me, show me that you are with me. And sometimes God calls us and we know we had. And we know we experienced. And we know it is clear from God. But we still want to be extra sure. We want to be 110% sure. And Gideon put this. It's not that God had not spoken to him, but he put out the fleece twice asking God, are you really with me? And he did that. The third worry that Gideon had to work with was when he called people to arms and told them, let us go and face the Midianites. Now, later on in the text, it will tell us that the Midianites army was 135,000 men who could fight and who were armed with swords and spears. Gideon called to arms the men of Israel, and they came 32,000 men. And the Bible says in Judges chapter 7, verse 2, the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. In order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her, announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. And, and I'm assuming when God told Gideon this, when God told Gideon, you know, go and tell the men to move on, uh, or those who are fearful to go back home, I am sure Gideon was thinking, these are strong men. These are men who have left their girlfriends. These are men who have left their mothers. These are men who have left their, their wives and have told them, onwards, Christian soldiers, we go and within the power and in the might of God to go and fight the enemy. And they have left there boldly. And maybe the whole village is cheering them on as they go to war. And then now they are here and Gideon is asking them, if you are uncertain, if you have fear, <laughs> God wants to slice down the army. Gideon might be thinking, maybe even if I tell them that, no man of Israel will go back. Shock on him. The Bible says in verse Four. So 22,000 men left. Sorry, verse 3b. So 22,000 men left with 10,000 remaining. 22,000 men left. Now the odds are great because 32,000 versus 135,000, it's about 1 is to 4. 22,000 men left. So he's left with 10,000 men against 135,000. So the odds are even greater. It's about 10 to 13.5, about 14. 10 to 14 that they are going to fight. And then God still says, these men are still too many. But there is a reason. It's because God wanted to make sure that they do not boast that their strength and might is the one that overcame their worry, but only God. And so God asked them, go and take the water. And the men reduced again from 10,000 to 300 men. 10,000 to 300 men. I don't know whether you have ever seen someone who has ever, because from 32,000 to 300, it's going from 100% to 1%. I don't know whether you have ever met somebody who wins with 1%. There is nobody who builds a business with 1% profit. It's horrible. You should be worried about it. But you see, God was sending a different message to Gideon, and it was a message of courage. Here it is. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is following God even in the midst of fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is following God even when you are fearful. A story was told of a young man who sat down to write an exam. And they were seated in this hall, about 200 of them writing the same exam. It was a philosophy exam, and the professor was seated at the front, and they were seated in the class about to write their exam, their final exam. And they were given a booklet, and a question booklet, and there was only one question with the 30 marks. And the question was this, define courage. Define courage. 
And the story goes that one young man opened his booklet, looked at the professor, looked at his booklet, looked at the professor, looked at his booklet, and after a while, he wrote a statement, went and dropped the booklet with the professor and walked out. And the professor looked at the young man as he walked out. And after a while, he opened the booklet, and what was written there was amazing. The student had written this. This is courage. Just that. This is courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is following God in the midst of fear. In fact, true courage comes from the presence and the promises of God. Let me, let me just point out one more worry that, that Gideon had to deal with. And it's found in verse 13 and 14. You know, at that moment when Gideon was wondering, will God help me overcome? And after they had walked into the Midianite camp and seen them. And the Bible says the camels were as thick as locusts in that valley. Leave alone the men, the camels themselves. The Bible says in verse 13, Gideon arrived in the camp of Midian. Just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. And his friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. God was showing Gideon, you know, Gideon, despite your fear, despite your worry, go and listen. Even the enemy is aware that I'm going to give you this victory. So, don't you be worried that you are worried. Allow your worry, allow your fear to be overcome by the very first point of the word of God because God has gone ahead of you. The word, the worry, but there is a third thing that we can get from this particular passage and it is this, the weapons. The weapons. Israel was going against a Midianite army that was well equipped. Remember now, 135,000 men against 300 men. Gideon had 300 men, but guess the weapons they have. They had jars of clay, they had torches, they had trumpets. I, I, I want you to hear that one more time. Jars of clay, trumpets, torches. Those are odd tools for war now. Those of us who have grown up in African homes know that our mothers can use any weapon. So you might have that kind of understanding when it comes to punishing you or dealing with your current issues. <laughs> but when it comes to a real war, jars of clay, torches, trumpets, and, and, and you know the mockery of the whole thing is that the Midianites who dreamt said that they talked about the sword of Gideon. And Gideon does not have a sword. In fact, when you fast forward this story into 1 Samuel, it says that in Israel, it's only the king Saul and his son Jonathan and their armor bearers who had a sword and a spear. The rest of Israel will come out with their farming implements to go and fight. So you can imagine. And this is how it went in this particular war. It says in verse 19 of chapter 7, Gideon and the men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and they broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars. Grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow, they shouted a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. Can you imagine that? They blew the trumpets. They broke their jars. They lifted their torches. What an odd way. Uh, blowing a trumpet is a way of saying, we are here. <laughs> Breaking the jar is making enough noise to say, we are here. Lighting your torch is even giving the GPS for where you are. You see, when you are few... You use cunning ways to kill your enemy. For example, you steal into the camp, you stab a few of them, you run away. You know, you, you go again, you steal into the camp again, you stab a few of them, they wake up and they go like, it's almost like a Rambo thing. You know, Rambo showing up in a whole military camp and getting to overcome it. He has to plant bombs everywhere. 
and you know grenades everywhere and you know put a few guns so that as he's running away he's able to pick another one and shoot that's what you do when you have few men this is not what they did they announced where they were because god had other plans and this is what god was teaching them through their weapons the battle is not yours the battle is not yours it belongs to god your odds could be great but the battle is not yours it belongs to god and so god is asking you today with your weapons what is it that you have in your hand even during such as this a season what is it that you have in your hand and trust it to god it will surmount barriers it will go against odds it will go against walls that you have never imagined and that is when you start understanding that god is using you against every odd against every great odd i love a hymn that is written that says this little is much when god is in it little is much when god is in it so give it to jesus give it to god put it in his hand that is what gideon did though the weapons they had were odd and few and though the men they had were few they trusted in god and they stood and gideon led them and he went and he blew his trumpet broke his jar lit his torch the other people did that and they shouted a cry out to god and god showed them that he could use very odd weapons to overcome the situation they were in the word the worry the weapons but then there is one last thing that is here that i want to share with us and that is about the win the win the bible says they blew their trumpets they broke their jars they lifted their torches and they shouted a sword for the lord and for gideon and the midianites started fleeing while they started killing each other the bible says in verse 22 when the 300 trumpets sounded the lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords and then they started fleeing so 135000 men they start stabbing each other now we are dealing with about uh, let me see the mathematics 67000 maybe 500 men and then the 67000 they do the same until it comes to them that hey we are actually killing one another in this whole confusion that god has created and they started fleeing and those that started fleeing away gideon started timing them by the rivers by the ravines by the boundaries of israel so that they could capture them and finish them off and the bible records that there was a great victory there was a great win that day against the midianites because of what god started doing through 300 men who trusted themselves to him you see when god sends us against great odds he has already dictated and declared the win let me say that one more time when god sends us against great odds he has already dictated and declared the win the bible teaches in exodus chapter 14 let me just give you two more examples it teaches in exodus chapter 14 verse 13 when the israelites were leaving egypt and the egyptians were behind them and the mountains were surrounding them and the sea was ahead of them it says in exodus chapter 14 verse 13 months when papa cried out to moses asking moses what shall we do moses answered the people telling them do not be afraid stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the lord of the lord will bring to you today the egyptians you see today you will never see again you have to understand that god already has a plan in place that will help you overcome the great odds that you are facing even in your life what you are seeing today opposing you you will not see it again let me refer to one more passage this was king jehoshaphat in second chronicles chapter 20 and the bible says they presented themselves to god and they told god we are not able to go against this enemy we actually don't have the power to face them we do not know what to do our eyes are upon you and the bible says in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 15 the lord said to them listen king jehoshaphat and all who live in judah and jerusalem this is what the lord says to you do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours it is god's tomorrow march down against them they will be climbing up by the pass of ziz 
and you'll find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. Stand firm. See the deliverance of the Lord. That the Lord will give you, O oh Judah and Jerusalem. And I don't know who it is that God is speaking to today. Telling you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position of prayer. Take up your position in the word. Take up your position in repentance. Take up your position in intercession. Take up your position. Stand firm. Do not be moved or shaken. See the deliverance that the Lord will bring to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow. And the Lord will be with you. So here it is. My viewer, my listener. Here it is. The odd, odds will be great against you. But remember the word of God. I am with you till the end of it. Meditate on it until it becomes part of you. That is what Gideon had. Just to remember. The odds will be great. But get over your worries. Worries are genuine. They are part of life. You keep wondering. Is what God told me going to be achieved? But you learn how to overcome your worries step by step. And you will see God help you. The odds will be great. But God will use what you have given him into, your, into his hands. The weapons that you have. They might be odd. But God using them, they are strong. The odds are great. But God will give you the win. As I pray for us in this closing, I want to pray over two or three things. And the first thing that I want to pray is that we will go back to God. As a church, as a nation, as a people. We'll go back to God. The reason the Israelites were in the situation they were in was because they had walked away from God. And could it be that we are in this season because we have not turned our hearts towards God? In fact, maybe our ways, our thoughts, our minds have been away from God. And God is calling us back to him. That's the first prayer I want to pray for us. That we we'll look to God. And may you take this moment as an individual, as a family, to ask God, God, what is it? Maybe it's, it's a sinful life that I've been living. Maybe it's dependence on other things. Maybe it's even my business. And God is whittling it down from 135,000 or 32,000 to 300 to show me that he can use the 300 to overcome the 135,000. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for some of us who are looking at this thing and seeing it as so big. And God is saying, overcome your worry. I want to show you my win. And the third one is to declare God's win, even of our life. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, I want to ask that as a church, as people who are viewing, as individuals, would you bring us to that place, even as a nation? A place of repentance, a place of calling on your name. You said that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I will hear them from heaven and I will heal their land. Is it possible that, Lord God, we are living such lives that you do consider at this time that you want to heal our land, but it will not be until we turn ourselves to you. Help us to be repentant. Speak to us where we are, in our own situations and in our own states, so that we will turn to you. I ask that, Lord God, you will create in us clean hearts. I ask that, Lord God, you will create in us humble hearts that will look unto you. And will seek your face even at this time. But I also want to pray for some of us. And maybe it's most of us who are going through a circumstance we cannot be able to define. Because the odds are so great against us. But you're the God of our victory. You're the God who says give this worry, give this thing, give this weapon into my hands. And I will show you what I can do. Father, I want to ask that you would allow us to stay in that state of surrender where we give things into you because we know that you are in control. Some of us are asking, where is God even with this corona? But may you show us that you can still rise up against our enemies. When the enemy rises up like a flood, you will scatter him and you will raise us even another standard, the power of your blood. So pray, Lord God, that we will live in the place of recognition that victory belongs to God. You have already gone ahead and put out a plan of how you're going to win for us. 
Our food is secure in your hands. Our mental health is secure in your hands. Our jobs, our businesses, they are secure in your hands because God knows how he'll bring us out of this victorious for the glory and honor of your name. We give you thanks and we give you praise because even when the odds are great, you will still help us to overcome against all odds. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today. I want to welcome you to continue visiting our social media pages, our Facebook page, our Twitter page, our Instagram page. You're going to be posting a lot of things are there. This coming Tuesday, on Tuesday 7 to 8 p.m., we are going to be having our prayer service, a live prayer service. I want to invite you, because of curfew and because of being home, uh, let's join together to get to pray together. I'm going to be leading us in that even as we meet and pray together. May God bless you. Stand on his word. Overcome your worry. Give every weapon that you have as odd as it is into his hands and you will see God's will. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for that word, Reverend Steve. What a blessing. I have picked a few lessons. Now, I noticed that when the word was going on, uh, the comments were fewer. People are listening. It's been amazing to just to hear and to be reassured that God is still with each and every one of us. Remember God in his word. Get over your worries. Use, remember, God has given you hands. He's given you weapons. He's given you talents and gifts. Those weapons are strong enough. But also remember that victory belongs to Jesus. That the battle is not ours. The battle is indeed the Lord's. Now, uh, some amazing things. Uh, I know we are missing a lot of things. Number one, I, I miss a groups and, and, you know, just getting together in a group and having a cup of tea and a few things here and there. Uh, but guys, you can still interact via uh, Zoom. You can still do Facebook Live. You can still do WhatsApp, video calls. Um, you can do whatever is it, it is that you do just to make sure that you keep tabs with each other. Musi Poteleane sana. I want to just give uh, or read out a few of the wonderful comments that we have had. I am told that John Mark and family are watching from Kasarani. Uh, Pastor Angelo, Pastor Gitao, Pastor Francis, Shiko Muradime. I can see all of you. I can also see Jackie, uh, Sarah, Njenga, Freedom, Methusela. E oh, Tess. Tess Karanja is watching from the U.S. of A., um, we can see all of you. I'm going Jenga. She, Shuka, Karibu Sana, Pastor Mwanjei, Akopale, Monique, Michelle Amani. It's oh Michelle or Michael Amani. Michelle Amani. It is Pastor Chris Mburu. We are happy. Sylvia Masharia, Karibu Sana, Enoch Gitonga. That, that one should be my neighbor. Um, thank you so much for watching. The good thing is that this goes. Viral. You can share with anyone who is abroad, uh, who is not abroad, who is overboard. Share it with people. Share it as much as you can. Now, uh, one of the things that I purpose to do during uh, quarantine is to learn songs. So I've been doing hymns in my house. And I want to encourage you to do something similar. Just do something that will uh, be a blessing to you. Even as we look back and say, but I want to assure you that this is almost um, over and done with because God is in control. Uh, now, to quickly take you through the guidelines, our health guidelines, please make sure you wash your hands or sanitize them at least. Wash your hands with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds. Sanitize your hands. Keep social distance if you can and if it is possible. Please stay at home. This is the only time you can stay at home and actually save lives. Then when this is over, you can go out and stay out. But for now, it's a bit illegal. Make sure to follow the curfew guidelines by Samoja Kamili Ukwe Nyumbani. And on Tuesday, 7 to 8, tune in on Facebook. We will be having our prayers. And uh, just to encourage you to keep giving 
um, the accounts number um, are just given right there on your screens. Uh, Mpesa number is 761780. And uh, the contact numbers for in case you need anything, you need prayers, you need attention, you, need, you just need us to come through in any way. The numbers are right there passing on your screen. You can keep them, you can use them, and you can use them for, for, for prayers. Uh, thank you so, so much. It has been a pleasure to enjoy and to uh, host you in this service. Oh, oh Liz Gisheru. Oh, uh, that was a colleague in Plugin. Sharon. Okay, now now to you on and Piani. Shout out. But I have seen all of you. I have seen all of you and I have appreciated. I hope to see you again next Sunday. God bless you and God be with you. We can do our, the, our benediction from Psalms chapter 23, verse 6. You can say it with me. Surely, goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Father forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Oh, first time visitors karibuni sana sebuleni nilikuwa hapo kwa comments. Naona mtu ameuliza kama tuko na second service. Hakuna. It was our one and only service. Uh, I don't know. Uh, f- f- first time visitors will create a special place uh, for you to, to comment to comment on and we'll be very, very happy to... God bless you. Enjoy the week. Blessed moment. Why am I hanging?